Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's April 30th, 2022, and today what I thought I'd do is give you uh, my thoughts on battery overheating in GoPro cameras. This was a comment that I received. I'm going to respond to a comment that I received on my most recent video that I posted was about using uh, gimbals uh, with GoPro cameras. And I've made a, a couple of videos on my experiences with the customer service and years of using the GoPro cameras and all, and it's been pretty positive. I had some really good uh, experiences thus far. <clears throat> and <clears throat> for those of you that don't know, at this point, as far as GoPro goes, I have three GoPro Hero 7s, blacks, that I love. I have one GoPro Hero 9 and one GoPro uh, Hero 10. I do have some other accessories that I'm going to mention in today's video. But the comment that I got from, it's a Mad Mad Homestead, I think it is. Uh, I have three GoPro 10s uh, with all the mods. I, I have that... I find that the cameras all overheat regardless of the outdoor temperature, winter or summer. It's quite frustrating when you're working to have to stop and cool down, the, uh, cool down by some means. Removing the battery and placing it with, it with a cool one uh, can work for a short period of time. I have the subscription as well and feel that it is a slam dunk for someone who has to buy three cameras plus everything else from scratch. I think I saved over $400 on the accessories, Don. And, uh, and I did a quick response this morning, but I thought this was such a good opportunity to discuss the limiting factor. Now, those of you know that uh, when I talk about investments and all, I'm often talking about um, costs versus value, uh, um, uh, types of investment, whether it's a degenerative, generative, regenerative investment, and all the different things that I talk about with investing and all. And whenever I'm making an investment, one of the things I'm always looking at is what are what is the limiting factor? What is the bottleneck? Where's the most likely area that something's going to break down? And as many of you know, I'm into the disruptive technologies, and battery technology is really rapidly uh, developing over time and the cost is coming down and some companies are taking shortcuts and other ones aren't and I won't go into that right now but with the uh, with the GoPro with with cameras in general uh, because there's a great demand for all of these added features and higher resolutions and more functionality uh, there is more processing power so there's um, more chips on the small circuit boards that are that are being placed in these cameras and the more functions that the camera must uh, must perform the greater the demand there is on the battery now I live in Oswego New York and uh, so I've had experiences before and as many of you have had as a as a, the old lead acid batteries uh, get older and all on a really really cold day Trying to start a car may be very difficult because the battery won't turn the engine over as well, and a lot of it is because the battery isn't isn't doesn't function optimally in cold temperatures, nor does it function optimally in very hot temperatures as well. And with the added processing uh, demand on these cameras being in watertight. Uh, uh, non-porous, poorly ventilated uh, camera housings, uh, the, the, the more demand there is on the batteries. And the battery technology, really one of the big caveats, the limiting factor is the cooling capacity of the batteries. And that's the same thing with electric vehicles or with power tools. And I could talk about the new pouch technology that DeWald is using now and some of the shortfalls that there are with, with that system and why they're just having the smaller battery, uh, amp hour uh, batteries at this point. But the point that I want to make is that uh, when you have an increasing demand on processing power of any techn technology, you really, and it's with its demand on a battery, we, cooling is an absolute essential part for safety and for functionality and duration of utilizing that charge that's in that battery. Now, 
So the first thing I would say is always making sure that we've that we've uh, done a good clean factory reset and that we've updated our firmware. Uh, those are just givens and formatted our recently formatted our um, our, our card in in the uh, camera as well. Then trying to decide what we actually need to have performed. So there's a lot of times that we don't need as much processing being done in the camera and reduce the processing power, thereby reducing the demand on the battery as well. However, one of the things really neat about the GoPro Hero 9, uh, or the 10 anyways, uh, is that we can use an external battery source so we don't have that heat building up in the battery within the camera itself and utilize an external uh, battery source. So here are two of my Voltas, and we have one more. Thea has her own. I just got my other one uh, yesterday in the mail, and I'm going to be hooking up my old microphone with a GoPro Hero 7 on this one. This is my uh, creator, creator edition one. So it's got the Volta here. It's got the GoPro Hero 10. It has the, uh, the uh, I'm going to call this the housing mod with the external microphone and the ability to hook up to external mics. Uh, I think it has headphones as well and power supply. So one of the things you can do with the GoPro Hero 10, the camera can actually operate without the battery in it and you can use the Volta hand grip and actually uh, control it by the Volta hand grip and, and you can use the power source from the batteries which is about three times the, the uh, energy reserve that's in the uh, battery within, the, uh, within the, the camera itself. So you can actually pull that battery out which generates heat as processing power is, uh, is utilized. So, you know, having a cooling system in a battery inside of a housing and then inside of another housing and then being inside of a vehicle and all, that can be an issue. Now, I haven't had, I haven't had the Hero 9 or Hero 10 long enough to do any significant testing to see how much these will overheat. But I do run my, uh, my uh, time lapse and all, which uses less processing power for very long periods of time, you know, for a couple of hours at a time, and have had no problems. However, like my, and I still like this camera, and I've got a lot more work to do with it, but I got the, uh, I think they call it the Twin Edition, and this is my Insta1 360 uh, camera. And so I'm working with this one, and yesterday I had it in Elon, the excavator, on the magnetic mount, and shooting some video in there, and it had shut off. And it and when I read the screen, put my glasses on, read the screen on it, it had overheated. And that's a really good safety feature. It shut itself down so it didn't do any damage. And uh, but it is exceedingly frustrating because I wanted to get a whole a whole session. Like uh, it was like an hour and a half session of 360 view of everything that I was doing so that I could analyze things later on. That's the main reason for having the 360 camera for me is to do analysis uh, and to, to troubleshoot things as well. So that camera overheated and I don't have the ability with that one to use the mods without a battery and use the external uh, power supply. Now certainly the Volta can work with it. That can be the power supply for it and but they don't have a firmware in it that will say oh use the external power supply as opposed to the internal power supply so that's one thing that i'd like to see insta360 uh work at but you know most people aren't shooting like i am prolonged periods of time they're taking they're using a selfie stick and they're getting some action shots and all and gopro up to this point uh back to gopro now uh has been trying to put all of the the, uh, the needs of all the other u users, so me on the farm trying to do uh, educational pieces, trying to capture uh, things over a prolonged period of time, is different than someone who's going to use it for astrophotography, is different from someone who's doing uh, skiing, who's doing snowboarding, who's doing scuba diving, whatever it may be. These are action cameras 
but it's like Nvidia. Nvidia, they try to make chips that can run gaming processors, that can go in cars, that can do all sorts of different things. And when and when you're trying to meet the needs of a diverse group of, of users, you're limited as far as the abilities to expand on it. Now GoPro is is reportedly coming out with new uh, cameras. They just came out with one that's a stripped down uh, GoPro Hero 10. It doesn't have screens or anything and it's for drones. So I think that's a great idea. Is that something that I would use? No. Uh, but hopefully they'll come up with cameras that just use external ba uh, battery supply and they can run for hours. That would be fantastic. But as far as I'm concerned, I think GoPro is heading in the right direction and I think they're their Hero 7, their Hero 9, and Hero 10 look fantastic so far. I think they think that the uh, the twin edition of the of the Insta 360 One RS, which I have as well, is a fantastic camera. Boy, they've really come a long way with 360 view and being able to see more detail. Um, and their apps on the on the on a Windows um, operating system on a PC is pretty darn good. I'm sure it's good on the phone, but I do everything on a PC. So there's a long ways to go, but the limiting factor with this new with these with these advancing technologies, whether it's a smartphone, uh, uh, any contained uh, semi water resistant or waterproof housing uh, electronics, the limiting factor is processing power, but the biggest one is the battery technology. And, uh, and so that's where we're at. So being able to use an external power source and turn off the internal uh, battery supply would really give us the ability to run these cameras for longer periods of time. So I know most of the people on this channel aren't interested in this particular topic, but since I can't do a lot of my regular stuff out here on the farm today, I thought I'd make this quick video response. So if you found this of value, please give us a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and by all means, folks, stay safe, take good care of yourselves, and get out there and enjoy the weather outside. Bye-bye now.